Hey, everybody. We are now live in marketing and conversion for realtors and loan officers. I have some very juicy training to do tonight for those of you who are having an inventory problem in your market and you are looking for ways to drum up more listings. Um, we're going to give it a few minutes for some people to come in. If you would, please let me know where you're coming in from. Type in the city and state where you are joining us live from. I am not the best at keeping up with the comments because I like to stay focused on, on the training. Uh, but Dwayne will be commenting from my Facebook page. Hopefully he puts his name in parentheses. <laughs> Last time it was kind of weird. It was like, okay, Dwayne, I'm not sure I meant to say that, but... <laughs> I think everybody understood what was going on. So tonight I am going to go over how I made $82,017 in one year off of one campaign alone with a $50 per month budget. This was not my only source of generating leads. It was one of many. And so it is definitely something that is easy to do and you guys will benefit from it greatly. I am very excited to share this with you guys. Um, worked really hard on this PowerPoint. Got a lot of good juicy nuggets I'm going to be throwing out tonight. Lots of links and deliverables that you guys are going to want. All right, we've got some comments coming in. Kimberly from Fontana, California. Keisha from Raleigh, North Carolina. Tammy from Lakeland, Florida, and Chelsea from Fairfield, Connecticut. Uh, while we wait just a few more minutes for some people to come on, I uh, wanted to share real quick with you, <laughs> side note, uh, besides being a real estate coach, a mother of four, a ministry leader, and Dwayne's wife, I actually have 400 gallons of fish tanks total combined between six tanks that I manage with close to 100 fish. So excuse the messy bun tonight, but I have been playing with fish tanks all day. <laughs> so does anybody else have any crazy hobbies? If you would, while we're waiting for some people to come in, type in the comments what your hobbies are. What do you like to do? I see Sonia's joined us from Marietta, Georgia. Susan from Merritt Island, Florida. Thanks guys for joining us. We are going to be talking about how I turned a $50 per month budget into $82,017 in commissions in one year through a very simple method that's very easy for you guys to apply. You do not have to be a marketing genius or a tech genius to use this method and I'm going to spill the beans tonight. Uh, this is the first time I have ever shared this secret or tip, technique, however you want to call it. So you're going to be um, sure to want to take notes. Uh, we will put the video back in the group tomorrow along with the link. Um, any links that you guys want, just you, as we go throughout the night, comment which links you want. Allie from Salem, Oregon. Thanks for joining us. Uh, looks like we've got quite a few people coming on for the training tonight. Uh, for those of you who just joined, I am going to be spilling the beans on a technique that I have used throughout the years. It's about um, how I spent $50 a month on one campaign. Now, this is for listings. Now, you will get buyers from listings, but this is a one campaign that I've used throughout the years. I'm going to give you every link, every piece of the puzzle to make this work for you absolutely free in tonight's training. So I am excited to get started. Give it just a few more minutes. We've got Erica coming in from Cape Cod, Massachusetts. I spoke with a gentleman today from Massachusetts, said you guys are getting some snow. Woo! Cold, cold weather up there. We are in Florida and enjoying the warm weather down here. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and jump into the training. I'm going to share my screen here. Dwayne, can you hear me in there? Let me know if there's anything that does not look good on your end. All right. Can you see that, Dwayne? Perfect. All right, guys, I'm going to jump right in. If Dwayne, if you will 
answer any questions in the comments and, and take care of that, I'm going to move forward. All right, guys, this is how I went um, from driving past. Here's my pain point. Learn how I went from losing business from my very own neighbors to implementing simple practices to capture more neighborhood listings and closing 10 deals in my very own neighborhood in one year. And guys, this, this is a way that you will never lose another listing. Never lose another listing. Oh, you're not sharing the screen. It's not sharing? Okay. Let me get my tech guy. It says one, two. Is that what's going on? Hold on. <laughs> Do I click share here? I can't see. Oh. Where's your PowerPoint presentation? It's right here. You, you put it on there for me. Share the mouse, please. Mm -hmm. Sorry, guys. Guys, my husband is the tech guy. I am not techie at all. He makes me look really good. <laughs> he's going to get me fixed up here. And anytime you run into a tech problem, he's your guy. He's going to get you fixed up too. <laughs> Sometimes I have problems with my phone and my teenager's like, here, mom, just give it to me. So you do not have to be a techie to be successful in real estate, as we have just proven. I, uh, you just got to know a guy and <laughs> moving forward. All right, guys. So the pain point was I was losing listings to other agents in my neighborhood. Every time I drove by, I would get that sinking pit feeling like, ah, oh, they went with a different realtor. So I'm going to teach you how to avoid that sinking pit feeling in your stomach when you realize your neighbor just listed without you. I don't know if you guys realize this, but if you lose just one listing per month in your subdivision, it will cost you an average of $108,000 per year in commissions. Now, if you captured one listing per month in your subdivision and the seller bought another house, you'd make an additional $216,000 per year in commissions. Uh, yeah, what would you do with an extra $216,000 per year? Go ahead, type in the comments what you would do if in 2021 you made two, an extra $216,000 just from this one method. What would you do? Would you take a cruise? I know I would. We love to cruise. We go on three to four a year. Would you buy a new home? We've bought several throughout the years. Would you buy a new car? I got my eye on a Dodge Hellcat right now. SRT8, it's got that Hemi in it. Oh yeah, mama wants a new car. Would you pay off debt? Obviously, most people would pay off debt. Would you buy a new wardrobe? Would you buy a second home? What would you do with the money? Maybe all the above. Go ahead, type that in the comments. Now, sometimes all it takes is a minor little tweak in your business to open up the floodgates to go to the next level. Sometimes you're doing a lot of the same things right, but sometimes there's things that need to be changed or done a little bit different. And that's why it's always good to go to the experts, people who've gone before you, you guys are showing up to these Monday night live trainings, you are trying to learn. Is there something that I can implement in my business? Is there something that Dwayne or Amanda or one of their guests have done? You know, obviously Dwayne and I have been real estate agents almost 20 years. There's a lot of things that we've tried that didn't work. And there's a lot of things that we have tried that did. Um, just off the top of my head, one of my favorites that we tried, Dwayne and I went to some conference. We're always going to seminars and conferences. We're constantly learning. We are students of the trade. We are always looking for better ways to do whatever it is that we're doing. And so we were at this one seminar and it had nothing to do with real estate, but we were saying, okay, well, if that worked for them in that industry, maybe we could tweak that a little bit for real estate and maybe it would work for us. So this guy says, uh, mail a shoe to your client, your potential client, mail a shoe, just one shoe to a lead and say, now that I've got my foot in the door and they, they said it was kind of a cute, fun way to, you know, they're not just getting a letter or a postcard. They're getting a box with a shoe, just one shoe, not the other shoe. So I found a huge lot of brand new shoes were super cheap. I think it worked out to be like five bucks a shoe. 
So we tried, we tried it. We mailed it out to a hundred of hundred leads to see if that would work. We got one phone call guys, one from a lady who got a shoe that just so happened to be her size and she really liked it. And she wanted the matching shoe. And Dwayne was like, really, really? <laughs> like it was a marketing piece lady. We don't have the other shoe. <laughs> So we're going to save you the trouble of mailing out shoes to people. <laughs> it doesn't work. But there are things that you can mail to people, things that you can do that do work. And so sometimes it's just that minor little tweak. And we've tried most everything. So we can let you know what does and doesn't work if you've got a crazy idea like that. <laughs> Moving on. This method that I'm about to share with you actually works well in subdivisions, but it can also be used in small towns or basically any zip code. So whatever zip code you live in, this can work for that zip code or that county or that town or that city. It doesn't necessarily have to be in your neighborhood. So if you don't live in a subdivision, don't worry, you can still use this method. All right. But before I go into what this method is, I want to tell you what it's not. It is not an instant overnight check. It is not meant to be your only mode of prospecting. You need to have multiple modes of prospecting. It is not going to get you massive amounts of listings in a short amount of time. Now, if you haven't got six to 10 listings in the last year, then this might, this might be a massive amount of listings to you. Uh, most of our students, when they are following our advice and going through the course, they're going to get at least bare minimum two listings a month, if not four to six. Uh, but this is not meant to be an explosive thing. It's, it's to get you you know, a good substantial amount of listings that you can leverage. It's not the same as farming. So don't go, oh, I know all about farm. And I heard my broker talk about that in a sales meeting. Now, this isn't farming and it's not foolproof. And I can guarantee you this, it will not work if you don't. So that's the other part of the coin. You've got to be willing to work it because there's a little bit of work involved. I mean, let's face it. Clients, are, they don't just fall in your lap. You got to work for them. But here's what it will do for you and your business. It'll get you brand awareness in your neighborhood. You'll have more listings than you previously had. So really good chance you're going to get some move up buyers because the sellers are going to want to move into another house, most likely in the same general area, at least the MLS that you cover. You're going to get more referral business because obviously they're going to refer you in the future to their friends and family if you do a good job. Then you can leverage the listings to acquire more listings. If you haven't already seen my training from two weeks ago where I taught how to leverage listings, I did touch on that in that training. That's a really good way to get more listings, how you can get at least three transactions per listing, um, leverage them to find more buyers. I, I went over that as well. Future repeat business. Okay, so in a lot of markets, these people are going to be selling in three to five years. And you might not be too worried about what happens three to five years from now, but if you do this right in the beginning, you're going to get business three to five years from now for indefinite. I mean, let's face it. Even if you're a brand new agent and you just got started and you go out there and you hustle for th the next three to five years, if you do it right and you set it up the right way the first time and you set up your follow-up and all of your systems you're going to start getting referrals. I can guarantee you, let me take that back. I got 50%, 50% of my business after about year in that three to five year range was coming from referrals and repeat business over 50%. So that's once you set it up right in the beginning, it can make you money for years to come. It's not just a one and done. Um, obviously every listing that you get, you can use in your take one flyers. I went over that in the week, training two weeks ago, how you can use the back side of your flyers on your listings to showcase other listings you have, because in case they don't like that property, they may like another listing that you have. Uh, pocket listings to offer to your existing buyers in office. Uh, for those of you who may not know what a pocket listing is, that is a coming soon. That is, you've talked to the seller, they want to sell the house, they're waiting for something to happen, spring or 
so-and-so to have a baby or let me get the house straightened up. There's something that you know you've got that listing, but it's not, it hasn't hit the MLS yet. Um, there's a lot of Facebook groups out there with realtors who network and connect where you can go in and say, hey, anybody looking for a listing over at such and such street? I got one coming. It's going to be listed mid-March, but you may have buyers yourself that are looking in that same price range and area. So you can let them know. So it's, it's actually a way to get multiple transactions. So if you want more listings, I want you to comment yes. Go ahead, put in the comments, yes, Amanda, I want more listings. I'm not going to move forward until you guys let me know what you want. If you want more listings, I will move forward. Go ahead and type yes. If you don't, we can all go watch TV. <laughs> it's up to you. <laughs> I don't make a penny off this presentation. So you guys are the ones that want the listings. Do you want more listings? Type yes. All right moving on guys the proof is always in the pudding so here's a few examples of some results i received from this method this was a couple in my subdivision now um, let me give you just a short brief um, backstory on this we lived in this subdivision for a very very short time just a few short years and this this method that i'm about to show you helped me acquire this business so this was a little starter home, a cute little family with one little boy lived in this house. It was in a cul-de-sac and I had been connecting with them through this method and they reached out to me and wanted to list their house. And they had a little bit of equity, enough to put 20% down. So I helped them find a bigger and better house where they put 20% down and were no longer paying PMI. And with the interest rates being lower, their payment only went up like two or 300 bucks a month. And I made almost 18 grand off of this one client. Now, if this method made you $18,000 extra this year, would you be excited about that? Let me know. Would you be excited about that? I know I would be excited about an extra $18,000 hit in my bank account this year. Here's another example of some results I received from this method. This is another little couple, same subdivision. As you can see, the house is al almost identical. They were literally the same layout. In fact, these two houses were on the same street. I wanna say they were three, maybe four houses apart. Um, and their kids actually played together, but they both contacted me separately based off of this method. Um, and obviously, once you know somebody who's used the realtor, oh, I helped your neighbor down the street, you use that whole approval of others close. And that just makes them feel even more excited to be using you as their agent because you helped their friend down the street, which they probably saw my sign in the yard too. So, um, and I helped them move out away from an HOA. This property was out in the country. It had a two car garage. Um, I want to say it was a fence backyard. They had a dog. Um, this property I ended up making well over 15000 between the two transactions. They sold one and they bought one. Um, this next couple, they were a family down the street. Uh, I think they were two streets over from where we lived. Um, and she wanted to move. Actually, they ended up moving to a completely different city. It was about 45 minutes away. Um, I ended up showing this lady about 50 houses, guys. But look at the commission I made. I made close to 19 grand off of this one client and it gets better. It didn't stop with just this one transaction in her family. I'll tell you about that here in just a minute. So moving on this property, interestingly enough, he was moving out of state and he had seen my um, marketing that I had sent out and also saw my sign everywhere in the neighborhood. He may have even had a couple conversations with neighbors who had used me at that point. He contacted me to sell the property. Uh, honestly, this house was in really rough condition. And when I walked in, I was like, oh boy, but you can't sell it if you don't list it. So I listed it and we sold it. It was about 20,000 below market, made nine grand. And for most agents, that would have been the end of the story. They would have let their client move on. This guy went to Alabama. Um, all these homes I sold when I lived in Tennessee. And most agents would have been like, 
thank you for the sale. Enjoy your life in Alabama. No, not me. I got on the phones. So actually, I went to Zillow and I typed in the city and state that he was moving to. I don't remember now where he moved to in Alabama. And you'll notice when you do that on the right hand side, there will be three agents names that pop up. And so I clicked on each one of them and sent them a message letting them know I had a client whose home just sold and that they were moving to that city and state in Alabama. Would they be interested in working with that client for a 50% referral? One agent out of the three contacted me back. Now this guy had cash in hand. He had good credit. He was putting a very large amount down. I literally teed this buyer up and sent him to her. I think she said she showed him like five houses. It went under contract and it closed within like 45 days. And they had a little bit of trouble on inspection. But look what I made, guys. $5,250 for just going to Zillow and sending And I copied and pasted the same message to all three agents. And the one that contacted me back was the winner. She got the referral. And you know what else it did? It let that, that seller know, guys, I know it's scary that you're selling your home in Tennessee and you're moving to Alabama and you probably don't know anything about the city and state that you're moving to. And you probably don't even know where to begin to look for a realtor. Let me find you a realtor. Okay. And what I did was there was like, I made like maybe two or three follow-up calls and emails to say, Hey, how's things going? Is everything going okay? You know, just to touch base. And at the end of the day, I made $5,250 and she made $5,250. And I guarantee you, she didn't have to work too hard for it. You are leaving money on the table. If you are letting your sellers sell their house and move out of state and you're not getting a piece of that because that agent, they're going to go down there and they're going to find an agent on their own and give that agent 3%. But if you can find an agent and take them out of the market for that agent, why would that agent not be willing to give you 50%? If at a bare minimum, 35%, don't leave money on the table. Don't let sellers run around the United States without representation, okay? <laughs> Just say it. All right, guys, don't forget the referrals that you get from your neighbors. So this is what I was talking about a couple slides back with that couple that ended up moving 45 minutes away. Her mother was in the car with us on a lot of the houses that I showed them. Remember I said I showed her 50 properties. Her mother was with us at at least 30 of them. And I got to know mom and I started talking to mom about buying and selling real estate. And she contacted me a few months later and said, hey, I wanna sell my house. And she, she was living in this house right here I don't remember, I know that her mother was living with her. I don't remember the exact situation, um, but she ended up moving to a townhome, a brand new construction townhome. And she just wanted something easier to take care of. She wanted less maintenance. I ended up making right at $15,000 just off of that one referral from the, from the client that I showed and sold, sold homes to from my subdivision. So, I doubt anybody was using a calculator, adding that up as I went. So I'll, I'll tell you what the total was. $82,017 in commissions. Guys, this is 100% measurable. It is 100% duplicatable. And it is 100% scalable. And that is what you want for a successful real estate business. These homes were sold in a market where the average first time home prices was about $250,000. Now they've gone up a little bit since then, uh, but I wanted you to know that this was based off of, of that average home sale price. Um, this, the results were also based off of marketing efforts to approximately 100 homes. I only tested 100 homes. And then of course, when you get that kind of results marketing to 100 homes, what are you gonna do? You're gonna up your, up your budget, right? <laughs> of course I did. <laughs> 
So results are going to vary based on your market, your personality, your follow-up skills, your brand awareness, and your professionalism. If you don't answer the phone and you don't return phone calls and you're not writing correct verbiage in your contracts and they're losing properties and you mess things up on inspection or you don't show up or whatever it is that, and they feel like, okay, my agent's not representing me you're not gonna get referrals from that person. So there's, there's a lot that goes into getting referrals. Obviously that's one piece of it, guys. So. so what is the method? So if you wanna know what the method is, I want you to type in the comments, show me the money. Go ahead, type in the comments, show me the money. As soon as we get 10 people, type in the comments, show me the money, I will show you the money. <laughs> there, of course, there is a delay on my end, so I'm not gonna see them right away. Okay, here they come. Kimberly wants to see the money. <laughs> Who else wants to see the money? All right, Leah. Hopefully I said your name right, sweetie. Chelsea, Edgar, okay. Just want to make sure you guys want to know what the method is. Matthew's tagging somebody who thinks he needs to see the money. All right, that's cool, Randy. There we go. All right, I'll show it to you guys. It's not some, you know, don't don't get don't throw anything at me. It's not as exciting as you think it is. It's very simple. Very simple. It's a postcard campaign, guys but not just any postcard campaign. This is called the Hey Neighbor campaign. Now, how many of you have heard of or done this in your life? You went to your neighbor and asked to borrow something. The, the old adage is borrowing a cup of sugar from your neighbor. Maybe, maybe you're a guy and you needed a tool for something or for some reason, if you were in a neighborhood where you felt comfortable doing that, you would feel comfortable asking to borrow something. So um, this postcard is has very specific verbiage in it for a reason. So as you can see here, I've got this big old box that says, hey neighbor. So first of all, they're gonna go, hey neighbor, what's this about? And then here in this little brighter box, whether you need real estate advice or a cup of sugar, I am one call or stroll away up in the top right corner. Again, these everything is placed strategic. All the verbiage is strategic. I am more than your neighbor. I am also a licensed real estate agent who loves helping people. And then over here, you have great taste in neighborhoods. That is one thing we have in common. As your neighbor and a real estate professional, I know what our neighborhood has to offer. The appreciation here is shocking. I would love to give you a complimentary home evaluation it is my gift to you for being such a great neighbor. And then of course my business card is up here on the left. Now guys, I mailed out a hundred of these, like I said, this campaign is gonna cost you about 50 cents per postcard per house. So if you wanna mail out 50 postcards, it's gonna cost you $25 one time. If you wanna mail out a hundred, it's gonna be about 50, 200 is 100, 500, 250. Of course, this is a one-time mailing. And if you plan on mailing them once and never mailing them again, do not waste your money. It does not happen that fast. It can, you can get a call from this the very first time, but this is your first touch. You're touching them one time. You're letting them know, hey, I'm your neighbor. I'm a real estate agent too. Nowhere in this though did you say, let me sell your house. Nowhere in this did you say, you want to buy another house? See, that's what all the other postcards are doing. They're coming from an angle of, I'm a real estate agent, give me your business. That's not what this postcard says. This postcard says, I'm your neighbor. By the way, I'm also a real estate professional. As a neighbor, I'd love to let you know how much your house is worth. Absolutely free. I just like helping people. If you ever need to borrow a cup of sugar, come on by. And People, as you've probably heard Dwayne and myself say this before, they do business with people they know, like, and trust. And who do you know, like, and trust more than your neighbor? Well, 
not all neighbors, but that's a whole nother training. <laughs> We're not going there. But like I said before, this is not the same as farming a subdivision. That is a completely different thing. That is considered a passive form of marketing for a long-term pursuit for real estate business. And usually that is done through postcards and letters. Again, that's the type of postcard that says, looking to buy or sell property? I'm the agent in your town. I'm the top third agent, blah, blah, blah. Nobody cares about that. They don't want to, they don't want to hear that stuff. When they want to get an agent, they're going to get an agent, right? And usually it's going to be somebody they know, like, and trust, not some random dude who sent them a postcard, but those do work. The numbers don't play out the same though. However, Dwayne is going to be doing a training next week on how to digitally farm a subdivision. I'm going to say that again, in case my accent threw anybody off, digitally farm, like on your computer, digitally farm. So you do not want to miss this. You can digitally farm any zip code and get fantastic results. I was shocked when he figured this out. I was like, you're a genius. <laughs> and of course I got business from that too. And so did he. Now, random farming is like throwing a bunch of goo at the wall and hoping some of it sticks. I'm sure y'all have heard that saying before, just throw it at the wall and see what sticks. No, no, that's not how we do marketing, guys. That's a good way to waste time, money, and energy. And it also gives people a bad taste in their mouth when, it, when referencing you as an agent because you're that random person who just throws things at the wall. Nobody wants to work with that person. You want to market on purpose for a purpose. And niche marketing always gets better results. And that is what the Hey Neighbor campaign does. It is, it is literally a niche market because you're looking for somebody who's wanting to buy or sell property, right? But so is every other realtor. And so by you, instead of just sending it out to all of the same subdivision and hoping somebody reaches you, you're actually honing in to the top 100 or 200 or 300 homes near you that you can say are your neighbor. And that is what you call a niche market. So let me show you another postcard that I use. This is an example of a follow-up postcard. Um, depending on what time of year you start doing this campaign, you do not have to do it in any exact order. I actually have 12 of these. Um, that I'm only going to share two of them with you tonight, though. Um, we actually have all of those. We're, we're actually adding them since I've created this uh, module. We are adding that into the course, so our existing students will automatically get that. Um, but that is something that our students get exclusively, but I am going to share two of them with you tonight. Here is an example of the follow-up postcard that I use. So again, I've got my business card um, right here. Hey neighbor. I always, always use the hey neighbor on the postcards because eventually they're going to recognize, oh, that's that girl. She's my neighbor. She's in my neighborhood. She's sending another one. Well, what does this one say? Are you thinking about remodeling your kitchen? As your fellow neighbor and real estate agent, I would love to give you an estimate on how much this should increase your home's value. Boom. How many times have you heard someone say, I'm thinking about doing a kitchen remodel, but I'm just not sure if I'm going to get the money back at resale. No, you're not. You're not getting it all back, honey. It's not all coming back. You might get 40%. 50%, but chances are you've brought it up to market. If you're at that point that you're doing a remodel, it's really about sales appeal, but they don't know that. They think that they spent 30 grand on their kitchen remodel and that they're going to make another 50 grand on their house when they sell it because they've been watching too much HGTV. That's okay. Let them think that. You just want to have the conversation with them. And of course, I always put up here, don't forget, I'm just a short stroll or call away to remind them, hey, I'm literally like right here in the neighborhood with you. I normally send this one out in the spring because most people start doing uh, remodeling projects like March, April, May, it'll trickle over into the summer. So even if it's May and you want to send this one out, you can. Um, it really, like I said, you'll see it here in a minute. I've got like a whole order of how I send them. So you can jump in at any time and send the one that applies to the month you're in. Uh, the, the key here is drip marketing. You want to constantly be dripping on them. Hey neighbor, I'm over here. 
And that way they're thinking the next time they think about real estate, you're top of mind. That's, that's the whole purpose here. Um, this actual, this postcard actually works really well. Normally this is the third or fourth postcard. And by this point that I've dripped on them enough where they know my name, they know I'm in the neighborhood because they don't always read them. So maybe they read the first one, but they didn't read the second one. Or maybe they read the second one, but not the first one because different marketing appeals to different people. So there's a reason why you want to send different things each time. And so at the point, once you get the call or if you bump into them while you're walking your dog or whatever and they bring it up then ask them why are you thinking about selling why are you worried about you know increasing value in your home if you do a remodel and sometimes you can save people the headache of a remodel and they say well i'm just tired of my kitchen well what don't you like about your kitchen well it's a little small it's a little dark or a little this or a little that say so, well how long have you had your house? Well, we've lived in it for seven years. Okay. So you guys have paid your principal down then, huh? Right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We've, we've put about 60 grand to it. Okay. Well, did you know the market's gone up considerably in the last seven years? I mean, you've probably got 50 to 60,000 in equity. So you're, you're probably sitting on between what you've paid down and the increase you've probably got a hundred to $120,000 that you could put down on another property with a bigger, nicer kitchen and keep that 30 grand sister. Use that to buy new furniture. Boom. You just got their wheels turning. You just got her dreaming. And now what is she talking about? Hmm. Wonder what that would look like. Well, tell me what kind of home do you want? What have you dreamed of? Well, maybe she's currently in a three bedroom, two bath house and she really wants four bedrooms, one level with three bathrooms so she can have a private guest suite. Maybe she wants a swimming pool. Well, you know what? I'd love to just look it up and see, no pressure, if there's anything on the MLS that meets that criteria. And then you figure out, okay, if she puts $120,000 down, let's say her current home's worth three hundred. dollars and she, she sells it and she's going to walk away with 120 grand. Look at $420,000 properties because now she's putting $120,000 down on a $420,000 property and she's not paying PMI. So now she's financing 300 and maybe she financed 300 before, but that's going to be cheaper on her payment because the first house she was paying PMI or at a bare minimum, it's going to be about the same. And even if it was two to $300 more a month than what she's paying, if she's getting a bigger, better, nicer house, especially with a pool and the kitchen she's been dreaming of, boom, your postcard worked. You got the business. So our job as realtors is not just to have conversations, but to get people dreaming dreaming about that house they want, dreaming about that property they want to buy. What are you going to do with that property? What are you going to build on it? You're going to have goats, you're going to have cows, chickens. What do you, why do you want land? Whatever it is that they're, they're talking about, entertain that, listen to them. And your job is to make dreams come true. Because if you can make, you're not just selling houses, you're helping people make dreams come true. That's what this boils down to. So anyway, I, that was not on script. Y'all got that for free tonight. <laughs> so now you may be thinking, all right, how much is this going to cost me if I send out postcards every single month over a 12 month period, if I'm doing 50 or hundred or 200 and how long is it going to take? Amanda, I don't want to send postcards out for a year before I get a list. And how long is it going to be before I see my return on investment? Those are great questions, guys. And I spent a lot of time digging this out of the archives and cleaning it up for you. This is a side-by-side -side comparison. This is my personal data. This is not something that I got from some random place online. Realtor.com does not know what my personal performance, my personal data is based on my experience and my professionalism. So this is what it is, guys. And if you have the personality of a rock, your results are going to be different than mine because <laughs> as you can see it, I'm friendly and I love to talk. But if you can have a conversation with somebody and you can follow up, you can get similar results. You don't have to be a super salesperson, but your results are going to vary based on you and your market and, and a lot of things. But you, if you do it, I guarantee you'll get a result. So here is how I send them out. Um, in January, I do Hey Neighbor, which is the one I showed you the first one. 
sending and obviously I don't do a hundred homes and I do way more than that. But this was the, this was that year that I started doing it. Um, $50 was about the average cost and February. I do love is in the air. I'm not going to show that one to you tonight. Uh, March is the one, the other one I showed you the remodel value $50. And then I have set, they're all going to run. If you do a hundred, it's going to run you about 50 bucks a month. Um, so, uh, on April, I did curb appeal. May is backyard barbecue. Uh, June is pool day. July is fireworks. August is back to school. September is based off of Labor Day. We talk about labor pains. Um, and that, that actually is a really cute one that I just, these, I don't know where these ideas come from. I say the Lord because they just pop in my head sometimes. I have no idea where they come from. This one is like you work hard for your money because um, it's around Labor Day. And why don't you let your money work for you? And I talk about a little bit about equity. And then October is I know a guy. People love this one. I don't know why. I, I should just send this one out all the time. It's, it's actually uh, based around, you know, getting leaves out of your gutters and getting ready, you know, cleaning up your yard for fall from all the fall leaves. And it's like, if you need somebody to get those leaves out of your gutter, I'm just paraphrasing, or, or get them out of your yard, I know a guy. And you have to know the guy. I mean, you know, Google in your area people who pick up leaves and have a couple of conversations. Spend about an hour one day calling a couple of guys. How much do you charge to clean out gutters? How much do you charge to get leaves out of a yard? And let them know what you're doing, that you're sending out a postcard to 100 people and they're going to get business from it. And can I get a discount? Can I get a coupon for my clients? And you put the coupon on the card with the guy's name and number. And I've got template. We've got templates for all of that in our course for our students so they can just go in and just plug in the information. Um, November is turkey time and December's deck the halls. Total cost for the year is $600 to, to mail 100 homes. That is cheap, guys. Industry standard is $350 average spent marketing dollars to get one client. Of course, we do not spend that much, nowhere near that much to get our clients business, but that is the industry standard. So based on those numbers, you should get close to two deals. You're going to get way more than that because... Like I said earlier, it's niche marketing. So this is my ROI on these postcards. Now you notice over here in the revenue column, January, February, and March, I made nada. And I'm going to be honest with you. When I sent the one out in March, because this was during my, the trial period, everything Dwayne and I teach our students, we have done it. Trial and error. We are real life realtors have been since the early 2000s. There's a lot of coaches out there. The majority of them have never sold one house. They have no idea what really works. They could teach you how to get a lead, but they're not gonna teach you how to convert it. They're not gonna teach you how to leverage it to get more business. They're not gonna teach you how to get referrals. They're not gonna teach you all the guerrilla marketing things that we've used just like this. For those people who cannot afford to spend money on Facebook, which is what a lot of them teach, which we do too. That's one of our methods, one of our methods. We have many, but this one made me zero the first three months. And I was kind of doubting myself. I just knew this was going to work, right? I got a phone call in March, literally like three days after I mailed out the postcard. So they must have just got the card. Um, and that was that first home I showed you, the Branhams. Uh, they bought, they sold a house and bought a house. And both of those, they, it was a simultaneous close, happened at the end of April. So boom, it took me 120 days to see a return. But in that 120 days, now this was April, I sent out the fourth campaign. I had spent $200, $200, to make $17,982. Now, at the end of March, the Carters called me and said um, they did not respond off a of backyard barbecue. They respond, they actually responded off the remodel value one as well. And they contacted me and said, hey, we're thinking about selling our home, buying another one, um, got your postcards, there's something, you know, what can you tell us? Can you come over and talk to us, look at the house, blah, blah, blah. I said, sure, neighbor, <laughs> I'll be right over. So I made 15,000 off of that one. Now it's guys, it's pipeline. It's pipeline. 
what you do today is going to close 90 to 120 days from now. So in June, I made zero because I didn't get a phone call. Other than those two phone calls, I did not get another phone call in April or May off this campaign. Actually, I do believe um, the Shivelys, it was mid-May when they called me. Um, but it wasn't off of, again, it was not off the fireworks card. I made $19,000 off of them in July, moving on. Um, a lot of these called me earlier than they closed. Um, the Carters, yeah, the Carters mom, she actually called me, it was back in June. So anyway, it all totals up $82,000 in commissions. You can see the ROI broken down by month. Of course, when I got my first sale out of it, I was sold on this campaign. And I said, we're going to run this thing for a year and see what kind of results we get. And you dang Skippy, January of the following year, I bumped that budget. Anybody, can anybody guess what I bumped the budget to? Do you think I went to 200 homes or more? <laughs> I'll go ahead and tell you it was 300. All right, guys, you need the right strategy, motivation, and tools to be successful. If you'd like a copy of the Hey Neighbor postcard, I want you to comment postcard in the comments and you will get a copy. I'm going to take this time while you guys are commenting to get me a drink of water. It is awful hot in here. Dwayne's got like 5,000 lights in here. All right. Let me hear it. If you want a copy of the postcards, type in the comments, postcard. Kimberly wants a copy of the postcard. Maya wants a copy of the postcard. Matthew, Chelsea, Nalita, Cecilia, Erica. Donald, you guys are the smart ones. Barb wants a copy. Kimberly wants a copy. Everybody gets a copy. Carla, Samuel, awesome. Jamie, hey, Jamie. Jamie's one of our new students. We're happy to have you on tonight. So is Sharon. Hey, Randy. Hey, Susan. Yes, you guys can get a postcard. And if you are watching the replay, do not think you have missed out. Type in postcard. If you were on the replay, also let me know you're on the replay. All right, you guys, whoever po types postcard in the comments, question, how would this work for an MLO? Dwayne, can you answer those questions while I move on? My husband is the expert on that. Printing the postcard. So I'll give you the postcard and you can take my business card out and put yours in. It's very simple to do. But then what? So there's a couple of options. You can do it yourself. A lot of agents do in the beginning when you're just starting out. You can't really afford printing. I will go over that in a minute. Uh, but option one is to print them yourself. You're going to need 110 pound cardstock paper. That just sounded expensive, didn't it? <laughs> but you're going to print two postcards to a page. Got more people saying postcard. All right, guys. Awesome. Keep commenting and you will get the postcards. The postcards, um, it's going to cost you about $10 for 200 sheets. Um, I've got a really good uh, source for that. So you're going to get 400 postcards out of this. So if you're mailing 100 a month, this is four months, four months worth of cardstock paper for 10 bucks. So if you want a link to the cardstock I use, comment cardstock. And I will make sure that you get a copy of that link where you can get 400 postcards for 10 bucks. Next, you're going to want to cut them in half and trim the edges so they look nice and professional. If you use scissors, you are going to be frustrated. You're going to end up throwing it in the trash and saying, forget this. <laughs> so I recommend using a paper trimmer. There are a lot of paper trimmers out there. They are not all created equal. Um, there's some of them are close to $100. There's no need to spend that kind of money for this. I've got a source to a trimmer that you can get it for about 20 bucks. Now, a lot of your real estate offices are going to have these over by the printer. And depending on whether you have a printer at home or a printer at the office, whether it prints color, black and white, all of those things are going to factor in. Um, you just have to figure out the most cost effective way 
to print them yourself as far as the printer and the ink goes. Most agents do have a copier at home. If not, your broker should have one. Um, either way, you can figure that out if, you, if your broker does not have an office for you to come in to print or they do not allow you to print your marketing materials and you don't have an at-home printer, there's always Kinko so you can, and Staples, they, they do printing for you. Okay, option two, to have them professionally printed. Now having them printed obviously is gonna save you time, energy and money, but it's gonna cost you more. That first year that I did them, I printed them myself. You know, but guys, sometimes you're stepping over dollars to save pennies. So you have to ask yourself, is it really worth it? I mean, yeah, you're going to save a lot of money doing it yourself. But in the end, you're going to spend the time and energy to do it as well. So if you are a very busy agent and you just don't think it's worth the time to print them and cut them yourself, then type in printer and I will give you a link to a printer that I recommend. You can get these postcards as low as nine cents each. Um, in that instance, you have to order 250, but even at 13 cents, I, I, I don't remember the math, but it's just a few pennies more to do smaller quantities. So type in printer um, if you want a link to the printer, the online printer that I use. Now, where do you get the data? Okay, so you want to mail postcards, you want to do a Hey Neighbor campaign. Obviously, you know the names of the streets in your subdivision. What are you going to do? Walk up and down the street with a notepad? and you know, look at the house numbers, you still don't know their name, right? You don't know every single person's first and last name in your subdivision, so you need data. Um, so you could always look it up on whitepages.com, which is going to take forever, and then you still have to manually type it in. That is the old way of doing things. Um, you can use your MLS tax system to download the addresses into Excel spreadsheet. Wait, what? What did you just say, Amanda? I can do what? Some of you may already know this. I'm not speaking to you at this moment because you're light years ahead of some other people. It took me probably five years before I discovered that this was a feature. So um, it may be in your MLS or your tax system. They may both be merged. Um, I know in my MLS, I can just log into my MLS and boom, there's a link that takes you straight to the tax system. And so this is actually in our tax system. So you go in and you type in the subdivision that you want to target and then it boom, da, 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 pulls up all the names, addresses, boom, boom, boom. It gives you the option to export to Excel, to an Excel spreadsheet and you export it. Boom, you're done. That's, it's that simple. But you may not know where that is in your tax system or maybe by some chance your tax system doesn't offer it. I personally have not ran into a tax system that does not offer it when I'm trying to help a student. So what I would recommend, if you don't know where it is in your MLS or tax system,